Well, you can search the writings of the great saints all the way back to Augustine, and you'll find theologians debating the creation account in Genesis. When did the universe uh, begin, and how long did it take to get here? These questions and more are ones that uh, our guest, Hugh Ross, has spent his life trying to answer. Take a look. Modern scientists have made some astounding discoveries about the nature of the universe. But many of these so-called findings are subject to debate, especially those concerning creation and the beginning of time. That leaves many Christians with a tough question. Does modern science agree with the Bible? Astrophysicist Dr. Hugh Ross has spent decades uncovering evidence that shows how science supports, rather than erodes, the claims of the Bible. At the core of that controversy is the biblical account of creation. Was it seven days as we know it, or much longer? Well, Dr. Hugh Ross is here. His latest book is called A Matter of Days. And uh, Dr. Ross, it's so good to have you back on the 700 Club. People love to hear from you. Thank well, you. Thank you. Hey, listen, let's just get to the big stuff. How old is the universe as far as you know? 13.79 billion years, give or take 0.05. And you were there, <laughs> thirteen point well, seven, give or take. You got it that precise. It's quite accurately measured. It'll be even more accurately measured within a year. And yeah, we were there in the sense that we astronomers look back in time. Okay. The farther away that we look, the farther back in time we see. Well, now what what is the evidence? I mean, this is a big jump. It's almost four billion years. That's a lot of time. How do we know it? Well, with the Earth. Uh, yeah, that's 4.5662 billion years. Oh, okay. So we know it to five places of the decimal, and we know it to that degree of precision right. uh, because of a number of methods. Give Probably me, give me one or two that are easy uranium for Uranium and thorium uh, dating uh, establish it to that precision. Uranium and thorium. Right. How do you do that? Well, you look at uranium and thorium right. decay into three different isotopes of lead. Okay. Lead only comes from the decay of these radiometric elements. So you look at the quantities of lead that you have, the quantities of the different isotopes of uranium and thorium, and you get six independent measures of the age of the Earth, and they all agree. Well, now, when did... Well, you've got dinosaurs is about 75 million years or so. When did man, the Homo sapiens, appear on this planet, do you think? Humans are relatively recent. We're looking at maybe tens of thousands of years ago. Uh, God created Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. and all humanity is descended from those two individuals. So I'm on board with my friends who are young Earth creationists that humanity is recent. Okay. Uh, well, it's, well, no, but, but what you're saying is, but God did the rest of it too, didn't he? I mean, he it, did. Yeah. And all of that was in preparation for human beings. Mm. I mean, God literally took this time to create, pack the earth with as much life as possible, as diverse as possible, and as long as possible that the laws of physics would permit. Why? So that we would have all the biodeposit resources we need to fulfill the Great Commission in thousands of years rather than millions of years. Well, let me ask you about this universe. How big is it? It's big. How big how big's big? <laughs> well, we're talking billions of light years across. Billion. And see, we can measure the size of the universe. We know the expansion rate of the universe. And you divide those two, it gives you the age of the universe. That's an easy way to measure the age of the universe. Okay. Because the Bible tells us it has a beginning as a beginning of matter, energy, space, and time. So it started off infinitesimally small mm -hmm. and has expanded to the size we well, see today. The Big Bang, uh, was it so dense we can't even conceive of the density and it suddenly exploded and out of that came everything we've got? Is that, is yeah, that that's the basic picture. And the Bible taught it first. Yeah. I mean, that's what brought me to faith in Christ, All right. was as a young astronomy student realizing the Bible thousands of years ago had accurately predicted all the fundamental features of what we call Big Bang cosmology. Mm -hmm. And no astronomer even hinted that the universe had these characteristics until the 20th century. But for thousands of years, the Bible said the universe expands, expands under laws of physics that don't change. Mm -hmm. One of those laws is a pervasive law of decay. It expands from a space-time beginning, which means, implies, that the universe gets colder and colder as it gets older and older. Well, it, it, Apparently, you found the 
red shift or whatever, that, that the universe actually is expanding. It's like a balloon going out, isn't it? Yes. It just keeps on going. But there are 11 passages in the Bible that told us thousands of years ago, really? we live in a universe that continuously expands. You know, how God stretches out the heavens. Mm -hmm. And the Hebrew verb there is natah, which means the expansion of what's being described. And it's described in all three Hebrew verb forms. So the Bible literally is teaching that we live in an expanding universe. Here's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm taking all that and trying to process it. Um, I saw a picture that was taken from some one of these space satellites we've got running around that, that, that showed this little pin dot in space, and that was us. Yes. <laughs> How many uh, stars, for example, like the sun, are there in the universe? Well, there's about 50 billion trillion stars in the observable universe. I mean, 50 billion trillion. Is that yeah. what you said? Give or take a few. How, <laughs> 50 billion. How many is that? Well, 50 that's, billion trillion? That's 23 zeros after the one. That's how many stars the size of our sun? Well, not, okay. The sun represents maybe about uh, a fraction of a percent of all the stars we see are sun-like. Uh-huh. Uh, so most stars are smaller than the sun, a few are bigger than the sun. But that's one of the reasons we know that uh, the universe has been designed. It takes a very special kind of star yeah. uh, in order to have advanced life. Well, we, we live in a solar system. <clears throat> solar system is part of a galaxy. And uh, are we second-rate galaxy, big galaxy, medium-sized? How big is our galaxy? Ours is a big galaxy, but it's not a supergiant galaxy. Uh -huh. And you know, keep in mind, we need the entire universe to get one planet in which advanced life is possible. The, the size of the universe, the mass of the universe, must be fine-tuned to an exquisite degree in order to get a planet in which life is possible. And so we must live in a universe exactly the size that we observe. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Well, as I understand, if the matter dealing with the Big Bang had been off by a fraction of an atom, it would have been too much gravity and it wouldn't have expanded, it would have, or else it wouldn't have been enough and it would have blown apart. Is that the idea? It, it, yeah, there's two features. If the universe <laughs> is uh, any... Uh, bigger than it is, uh -huh. it would expand too slowly and uh -huh. very quickly you get nothing but black holes and neutron stars and life would be impossible. But if it's not big enough, the universe expands so rapidly stars don't form at all. So yeah, it must be just the right size. Right. I'm looking at these pictures that you've have taken from the Hubble and other, other now you have the, the guys that the astrophysicists have taken of uh, these enormous clouds of nebulae and these gigantic star clusters. And I'm thinking of God. And I'm thinking of this little tiny planet we, we sit on. And <clears throat> where is he? How does he manage all this stuff? It's, a, it's huge. <laughs> well, it's huge. And it's one of the reasons why I think we're... Uh, you know, impressed that there has to be a God behind us because he is controlling everything. Yeah. And everything must be controlled so that we human beings can exist and that we human beings have the resources we need to fulfill the purpose for which God created us. So you're saying that the whole universe was set up as a backdrop for, the, for humanity? Exactly. That, that God that tuned it, this whole thing for humanity? exists so that we can exist and we can fulfill our destiny that God has well, assigned to us. we've got a star us. like the sun. We get the right distance from the sun. We've got a moon, some hit us and broke off something, it keeps us stable. We've got an inner core that balances, you know, the shifting of things. What else did he do for us here? We, we've got oceans, we've got water, we, where did that come from? Well, all the planets, for example, we see in our solar system, each one plays a vital role in making advanced life possible here on planet Earth. So we need the entire solar system to be exactly the way it is. We also need the history of life on planet Earth. I mean, God created the first life mm -hmm. 3.8 billion years ago, and uh, that's the earliest life could possibly exist on Earth. And he carefully designed the whole history of life. Why? So that we human beings who are created last of all mm -hmm. will have everything we need to be able to take the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ to all the people, groups of the world you know, quickly. The thing is, and I agree with all that, but we're so tiny. <laughs> I mean, if this universe is a flyspeck out in that great huge universe, I mean, if this planet is, is a little flyspeck, 
we're on the flashback. I mean, here I'm sitting in the studio with all these cameras and lights and everything, but uh, we're a little flashback. Well, in terms of our size, but yeah. keep in mind a star is just a giant ball of gas. Okay. Every human being is way more than a giant ball of gas. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're not only physical, we're soulish and spiritual. Mm -hmm. I mean, as it says, uh, you know, we're the epitome of God's creation. A time will come when we will rule over the angels themselves. Yes. And so we need not demean human beings. They're the greatest component in all creation. So will we have the power then uh, as human beings, I, I guess that's what the Bible says, to control planets? I mean, we will actually... Uh, well, the size doesn't make any difference then. I mean, that's not re God's really relevant. God's not promising us that we're going to be able to control physical creation. He does that. Okay. But he says in the new creation, we'll be there with them managing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be magistrates and we'll be teaching and instructing the angels. Because God set up this universe in such a way that we get to directly experience the grace of God. The angels have to watch it. We get to experience it. And so we're being trained and equipped. Thanks to the way God designed the physics of the universe mm -hmm. and the size of the universe in such a way that we can fulfill our future roles in the new creation. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if, if, if you get excited about this, but I do. I mean, the plan of God for you, and you're so important, in this tiny little space we're in, in this huge creation, God who did it thinks we're special. Uh, now, let's get, why do you spend your time arguing with these clowns that want to argue about 6,000 years? <laughs> You've got this vast panoply of the creation to deal with. Well, we've been talking about a lot of these incredible scientific evidences for yeah. the truth of the Bible and the Christian faith. Right. Often what gets in the way is this controversy over the length of the creation days. And so I'm motivated to take away the stumbling block that prevents people from seeing these powerful scientific evidences for the God of the Bible and the truth of Scripture. Well, isn't it sort of petty to spend all your time arguing about whether Usher was right or not, some medieval monk? That, that's part of the point. I mean, the Bible emphasizes who creates and how he creates. It's really not important for salvation when he creates. Well, it it also, it's, it's, a, it's a guidebook of how to find salvation in Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible is right. saying. It's, so this it's, is not a salvation issue, but it is an evangelism issue. Yeah. Uh, because you got people out there saying, if the Bible teaches it's only 6,000 years, my science tells me that's not true, I'm not going to give Christianity a thought a exactly. day. Exactly. And keep in mind the Bible tells us the book of nature is a book of revelation. God gave us two books, the Bible, scriptures, and the book of nature. They're designed to support one another and cooperate one another. So we're committed at Reasons to Believe to show people how the two books agree. Well, you know, as far as the, the age, I mean, anybody in the oil business, you know, you know, this is the Jurassic, you're down drilling into these zones that were there laid down, you know, tens of millions of years ago. And uh, uh, anybody dealing with the physical universe, the, the, anybody dealing with geology sees the rock structures and so forth. They, they have to be. You've got a book that... Well, <laughs> Yeah. What's interesting? Let me pitch I've, your book for you. Right. So yeah. What we've done in this book is yeah. to actually collect all the data on the biodeposit resources of the Earth. I think we're the first ones to actually accumulate all the data. And you look at the wealth of biodeposits across the crust of the Earth, the limestone, the coal, the mm -hmm. oil, the natural gas, the clathrates. Right. It's clear that this was not laid down in just thousands of years. It's way too much of it. Moreover, we need all those biodeposits in order to launch civilization and be able to fulfill the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And it's a message you see in Psalms and Proverbs and Job. I think this controversy would be resolved quickly if we could just get people to integrate everything the Bible says about creation. Well, you pointed this one group, this guy who's a former professor at Virginia Tech, he says you can't be a preacher or you can't be an evangelist or a uh, Sunday school teacher if they don't go along with all this uh, 6,000 year stuff. Well, that's the problem. And, but it's been a problem for thousands of years. It's yeah. interesting how Christians have divided over the non-essentials of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. In the first century, people were saying you had to be circumcised to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Now you've got people saying you've got to believe it's thousands of years to be a Christian. It's not an essential. 
No. As you know. Well, if you if you see the name of God, that's what you know. It's, it's Hebrew. It's the it's the Hifiel, He who causes everything to be. That's His name. I mean, you know, He's not a little reasonable deity. Ladies and gentlemen, this book. Uh, I might use the term exhaustive because I tried to read it. It's exhausting. It's got every single argument you've ever heard having to do with six days versus this expanding universe. Dr. Ross has, nobody's put a compilation together ever. This is it, isn't it? The first this one. is the most complete compilation. Yeah, all right. yeah, it's called a matter of days if you want to get into it. But I think instead of arguing, why don't we just say, how do you get saved? And you get saved through Jesus Christ. And the Bible is there to lead us to how the God who made us wants us to live and find Him. That's what it's all about, not arguing about an usher in 6,000 years. Dr. Ross, I love what you do. God bless you. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Get a copy. It's available wherever books are sold. Anywhere, bookstores, where you get it. Well, it certainly is available on the dot coms, and you can get it through us at reasons.org. All right, a matter of days. It's an unbelievable book. Okay. Well, Terry, we've got a few minutes left, so thank you. You get all your questions about where this earth came from? All of them, but he's fascinating. Hugh, thank you. Wonderful.